Hi everyone, welcome to another stream. Today we're going to talk all about monitors. I want to start off with a very exciting bundle we currently are running with our MAG and MPG monitors. You can see right next to me, you see a very big banner and there is a link in there. Go visit that link, make sure to like YouTube or Twitch or if you want double the chance both of them. Like both, sign in, the, in there and make have a chance to win a, a game code for the new game, Rise, uh, what is it? The Shadow of the Shadow Tomb Raider. Thank you, Peter. I totally lost the name there. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We will, we will draw two winners today, and we will send them the code as soon as, uh, as the game is out. So let's kick right in. We have two uh, very special guests today. Uh, first, we will talk to Samsung about the panels that we use in our monitors. Then we will also have uh, a chat with AMD. And they will explain us way more about a special feature in all of our monitors, which is AMD FreeSync technology. Um, so let's dive right in. We have YJ from Samsung, who is our guest. So hi, YJ, are you there? Hi, Mike. Hello, YJ. Hello. Hi. Can you, Can you maybe me? shortly introduce yourself? What do you do at uh, Samsung? Uh, hi, hello, uh, hello, MSI fans. Um, I'm YJ Kim, and I'm in charge of uh, curved panel sales in Samsung Display. So really, that's just Samsung Display, right? Because what many people don't realize is that Samsung is actually, it exists of a lot of different things. So you're really responsible for just the display part of Samsung, right? Right, just the display. Um, our company has uh, OLED display and also um, LCD display. Okay. Well, all of our gaming monitors are equipped with Samsung panels. Uh, they are VA panels. Can you maybe explain a little bit about it and what the benefits of VA technology are? Uh, so, I guess uh, there's a lot of buzz about which is the best monitor display for like gaming. And um, previously, people are people, a, a lot of people use TM panels because mm -hmm. um, it, will, it has like the faster response and um, then the IPS or VA panels. But um, you know, TM panels have a very pretty bad um, image quality and also limited viewing angle. So, um, uh, that's why the VA panels are much more suitable for gaming monitors because we have first uh, the high contrast ratio, especially in dark environment. You know, gaming so that really gives you the pitch black image, right? Right, right. So really, if you have a dark scene, it's really dark. Right. So um, gamers usually play games in really dark areas, like, and um, with high contrast, you'll be um, a, uh, with the VA panel, you'll be able to see really black image images in true black. While mm -hmm. like IPS and TN panels, they would show like great. So um, and also the that... colors of VA, they are a lot better than TN, are they? Oh, of course. The colors are much more brighter and also a very real life. -like. So you get yeah. really punchy colors in game as well. Right. And as for the so... response time, because what I understood, VA panels in the past. Like everyone in the past was talking about TN for gaming. You always need TN panels because they are the fastest. But now VA panels have come quite close, right? Right. So the 144 hertz panels uh, in like uh, gaming monitors, we we can uh, render like one millisecond. So it's mm -hmm. similar to that of the TN. So I would say the VA panel is pretty great for uh, gaming. So they actually became even more suitable for gaming maybe than TN panels who are always have been famous for it. Right, because we have a much better contrast ratio and a much better color quantity, I mean quality. And um, mm -hmm. we also, in Samsung, we also have the Mura adjusting technology. So it will make the pictures much, much more clearer. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and there's another very interesting thing about all of our monitors. They are all curved. And that's something right. quite new. Can you maybe explain what the benefits of curved monitors are in comparison to a conventional monitor? Yeah, so that's a very good question, Mike. So um, we we did a study with the very special distinguished institutions to study the effects of using curved monitors. Mm -hmm. First of all, you know, our eyes are spherical, not flat. So um, the shape of flat objects usually appear distorted when reflected on our round shaped retina. But by using curved monitors, there will be less distortion and making eyes much more comfortable. So if you play games for a long time, then you'll be less uh, tired. By, so uh, actually, YouTube. because curved monitors have like 
like your eye have a curve, you don't get the right. distortion you get like using with a flat panel. Of course. So And there's and another also, Yeah, sorry. Hmm. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, because I also heard that curve monitors are really suitable for multi monitor setups. Can you maybe explain why that is the case? Uh multi monitor setups. So, um, you know, usually a lot of people are using multi-monitors nowadays. Mm -hmm. So, um, so um, the thing is, um, when you use a multi-monitor, when you use two flat monitors, um, the, the distance between you and the left corner and the right corner of the monitor is further. If you use the curved, then it's much more closer. So it's, uh, you'll be less tired by be looking Because at it goes screen. like pretty much around you. Yes, right. So you'll be surrounded, so it's much more closer, so your eyes will be less tired. Okay. And a lot of people are using multi-monitors, but um, nowadays, um, that's why, you know, the 21 by 9 monitors are getting much more popular because you can get the advantages of having multi-monitor set up without mm -hmm. the bezel in the middle, and also you can optimize the space, and you can also have, you know, less cables for a simple clean look. So. It's a lot better to use like a curved monitor multi setup than the multi flat monitor setup. Thank you for your explanation. We have another thing about what's really important in the gaming market. Everyone's talking about high refresh rates. Can you maybe right. explain us a little bit about what it is and how it benefits gamers? Okay, about the refresh rate. Hold on. So, you know, um, refresh rate. As you know, refer to the number of frames a uh, display can dis uh, show per second, right? So, mm -hmm. and all of Samsung gaming panels have uh, 144 hertz or over. So, why so that means 144 rate? images in one second, right? Right, right, right. So, um, why is refresh rate so important? This is because um, it reduces uh, sc screen tearing in games. Let's say if a computer video card is spitting out frames at a much faster rate than the refresh rate of the monitor, sometimes mm -hmm. monitors cannot handle the data feed from the computer. So in that case, sometimes you, uh, the users will see half frames showing together on the screen. So that's why so, you get the stripes in the image, right? Right, right, the stripes. And another important thing is the input lag. So uh, with a six hertz, 60 hertz monitor, you will have a visible input lag over 16.67 milliseconds. But for mm -hmm. 144 hertz, you will never have an input lag below 6.94 milliseconds. So it's, it will render much smoother picture. So that's also very important for competitive gamers. So you really right. get the fastest image displayed on your monitor. As soon as it comes out of your graphics card, it's almost on your monitor already. Right, so it will be ready for the you know the speed of the the graphics card. Uh, you will need a to follow the speed of the graphics card. You will need a 144 hertz or over. Okay, thank you for explanation. The Samsung VA panels are already very impressive nowadays. But can you maybe explain us a little bit about what we can expect in the f future of Samsung gaming VA panels? Okay, so currently gaming panels, we have uh, the curved gaming panels, we have the 144 refresh hertz refresh rate mm -hmm. and the 4 millisecond or under the response time and 1800R curvature. But yeah. in Samsung, we're making very, uh, a lot of investments in R&D to improve our panels. So for refresh rate, we'll introduce um, probably 165 hertz for all sizes from... So it will be even smoother than the current models. Right. And uh, we're also looking for ways to decrease response time down to one millisecond in our panels. And also for the curvature to get a more immersive feeling, we're investing in uh, new equipment to uh, make mm -hmm. it less than 1800R for our generation two curve panels starting from probably next year. So okay. So you'll see a much more immersive uh, curve panel from our side. I'm very excited to see those new panels. Well, thank yes. you so much, YJ, for explaining everything about your VA panels and uh, okay. good night because it's quite late for you already right yes it's 11 close to 11 30 uh, okay <laughs> well good night then <laughs> yeah, thank you for the invitation and I hope uh, MSI fans will look out for more amazing products from MSI and Samsung Corporation <laughs> okay I'm sure they will thank you YJ bye-bye yeah, 
So now, YJ explained us a lot of interesting things about the, the Samsung VA panels that power all our gaming displays. Um, now we're going to talk a bit about our specific models of the, the gaming displays. So you can already see one here, but we'll start with the, with the lower end. So, as you can see, almost, there we go. Uh, we have the MAG series. The MAG 24-1C is uh, it's like the, the basic model. It's 1080p, 24-inch. Uh, we also have the R version of it. And that one adds RGB and height adjustment. And we have that model here. So let me just grab it real quick. So this is the MAG 24-1CR. As you can see on the back, we have the RGB lighting. Make sure you use USB to connect it to your computer, and you'll also be able to use Mystic Light with it. So you can synchronize your other components like keyboard or mouse with uh, the RGB lighting on the monitor. On the back, you can also see a small red dot, and you can use that to uh, adjust the, the OSD of the, of the monitor. So you can adjust your brightness or your contrast levels, or switch through different uh, inputs or profiles. Um, but there's another special thing about our monitors. And this OSD, you can also have the software version on your computer. So you can actually just use your keyboard and mouse to switch all those settings. So I'll put this one on the side, the 24 inch, because we also have the 27 inch monitors. So this is the bigger brother, as you can see right here. So these are usually very popular amongst people who want like a really immersive experience. A bigger screen makes it easier to get immersed in the game. However, most esports players, they want to have everything like in one view. So they tend to prefer smaller monitors, but it's all up to you. Like some esports players also play on bigger screens or vice versa. So um, the, for the 27 inch version, there is actually another version which adds, adds the Q to the name so here we have it the MAG uh, 271 CQR so this one this one has 1080p but the Q version actually has 1440p so it has a higher resolution so you get a sharper image with it um, so I'll just put these to the side because we need the space So then on the left, as you already seen, it's the MPG 27C. And this one has got some more features, some really interesting features. As you can already see on the front here, you can see RGB lighting. It's also on the back, but the one on the front is very interesting because it actually can correspond to the game. So for example, if you're playing Counter-Strike, you can display um, the ammo you have or the health you have or whatever you want to put there. You can put that in the bar below. We will demonstrate that later as well. Um, from this type of monitor, we also have uh, both the C and the CQ version. The C is 1080p, CQ is uh, 1440p. And at the moment, these are just available in 27 inch versions. But there is, of course, a lot more to talk about monitors because resolution, we already discussed it a bit. Um, the higher resolution makes it a lot harder for your graphics cards to really use the maximum potential of your monitor. And I remember my first LCD screen, it was 15 inch. So this is already 27, it was 15 and it was almost square. And it had a resolution of, uh, it was 1024 times 768. So that was really small. And it was just 60 Hertz and these are 144 Hertz. So as you can see, some math class with Mike, this resolution times the refresh rate, it outputs already uh, 47.2 million pixels per second. So if we continue, at the moment, 1080p at 60 hertz, that's like the most common resolution amongst desktop gamers at least. On a notebook, it's a bit different. They usually have a bit lower resolution still. But there you go, that's already 124.4 million pixels that are calculated per second. And this is just pixels, no effects or anything else. So this is already what your graphics card has to render in idle. So nowadays we're getting higher refresh rates, like 
144 hertz if you have that on full hd we already go to almost 300 million pixels that are calculated per second but as i explained we also have 1440p on 60 hertz it might sound it's a higher resolution but because the refresh rate is lower actually the amount of pixels per second is slightly lower so to use the maximum potential of a full HD 144 Hz display, that's harder on your graphics card than when you're using uh, 4040p 60 Hz. But of course, if we go like the, the higher end models, they are 1440p 144 Hz. And those, your, your graphics card has to render 530 million pixels per second. So that's getting really tough on your graphics card. So really, if you're going for that combination, make sure you have a beefy graphics card with a lot of VRAM so it can really handle your games well. Because this is actually higher than when you have a 4K screen on 60 Hertz. That's 797, 97.6 uh, million pixels rendered per second. But in the future, this will get a lot crazier. Of course, we already, now we're starting to get the 4K resolution gaming screens, but we're also, getting 8k screens already and of course in the future they will also be 144 hertz so you will get 8k gaming screens and i just made a quick calculation here and it's really insane if you're running an 8k monitor with 144 hertz that will give you 4.7 billion so that's 4777.6 million pixels rendered per second because of that, of course, you need a really, really beefy graphics card, a crowd card, and it, or maybe two. It depends on what you want to do, of course. But um, to to get that performance, it's it will cost you a lot of money. So I even if you don't use it to the maximum potential, there are some techniques to still guarantee you smooth frame rates. And now I will introduce you to Gilbert from AMD. Let's see if we get him in. Hello, Gilbert. Can you hear me? Hey, Mikiel, I can hear Hi. you. Hi, welcome. Can you maybe shortly explain us uh, who you are, what you do at AMD? Yes, absolutely. So, hey guys, I'm Gilbert. I'm a field engineer with AMD, and I'm very happy today to be talking to you guys about FreeSync. Yeah, because we already shortly discussed how heavy the current resolutions and refresh rates are getting on monitors. You really need such a beefy graphics card to play on the highest settings. So AMD FreeSync can help you a bit with that, right? So if your graphics card cannot get the maximum potential of your monitor, you can still experience a smooth frame rate, right? Absolutely. So how FreeSync can work, um, and I'm going to go back to a little bit about what Yunju uh, mentioned earlier with refresh rates. So as you know, refresh rates kind of operate on a kind of gated cadence. Um, mm -hmm. So if you ever have a frame rate that is different from your monitors display rate, you'll actually end up topping your image and that's when you get screen tearing. And that's a real big problem for gamers because when you're trying to line up that headshot and they're screen tearing all of a sudden, all of a sudden that guy's head is not on his shoulders anymore and you miss that shot and your whole team yells at you for making that big mistake and you feel very sad about your defeat. So, hey, so in that situation, the monitor is not exactly displaying where the game is at. Exactly. And it's, 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 a, it's a worse experience. And we actually found that when you have FreeSync, that actually helps gamers with their gameplay. So we actually went to several events uh, around the world and we actually had people testing our FreeSync monitors and we found that more people were actually winning with FreeSync monitors. So uh, how FreeSync works actually is that uh, we synchronize the gameplay's frame rate to the display's frame rate. And that allows mm -hmm. for a smooth, stutter-free, tear-free gaming experience. So, for example, if you're running a 144 hertz screen, but your uh, computer can only output 100 frames per second, then it will automatically match the uh, output of your AMD graphics card to the refresh rate of your monitor, right? So it exactly. puts the, the monitor to 100 hertz instead of 144. Exactly. And doing this actually reduces latency as well because we don't have to deal with waiting for that gate on the display to open before we can output an image. Because before we had FreeSync, there was already a thing called VSync, but right. there, all, gamers were always complaining that it caused so much delay and it feels like playing with, with old wireless equipment almost. <laughs> can you maybe explain what the difference is between the VSync and FreeSync? 
Right. So what VSync does is that it'll actually wait until um, the display gets the entire image from the monitor. Uh, what, as a result, you actually have to buffer frames. So your game might actually be a few frames ahead of what the real gameplay is. So you're always at a disadvantage. This is kind of like a natural lag that's just always present. It's independent of your internet, and it, it just makes doing those trick shots so much harder, make, make those Twitch reactions a lot harder. So because the buffering actually makes you wait in the game as well, and that's what exactly. causes the delay, right? Exactly. So you're always at a disadvantage when you're playing with PC. Okay, thank you for explaining. And you were also talking about that people are actually performing better with FreeSync, right? Do you maybe have an example of an event where you, you tested really gamers and how it, how it can benefit them? Absolutely. So a few months ago, we actually went to the South by Southwest event um, mm -hmm. in Austin, Texas. And we actually had uh, players doing Rocket League. So there was a Rocket League tournament going on. So we had a lot of high-level players, uh, as well as a lot of casual players, too, come by. And what they would do is they would face each other on identical machines. The only difference was that one had FreeSync enabled and the other did not. Um, and they played on each machine two matches. Um, so they got a chance to try uh, both a FreeSync off and a FreeSync on case. And we found that with two players playing against each other, um, mm -hmm. independent of the actual player's skill, FreeSync actually helped more people win more games. Okay, thank you for, for explaining FreeSync. We're now going to do some real testing with our monitors. Thank you, Gilbert, for explaining everything. And uh, for you, it's still morning, right? We just had Samsung, and she almost went to bed because it was like 11 o'clock in the evening. But how, what time is it for you? Because you're in Toronto, right? Yeah, it's almost 11, so uh, I'm going to think about what I'm going to have for lunch. Maybe some nice putin, uh, <laughs> a beer, and uh, I think that'll be a very good lunch for me. Well, enjoy, and talk to you later. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, Michelle. Take Bye, care. Gilbert. Bye, everyone. So that was FreeSync. We already have one monitor here. But what's better than one monitor? You guessed it. No, it's not two monitors. Because we actually have a third one. So we can really show you what it's like to play on three curved monitors to really get that immersive experience. Let me just adjust all of them properly. And get them on the same height. go so now I'm just gonna walk to the other side let me just adjust the microphone real quick so now you should be able to hear me a little bit better so I'm just gonna adjust the monitors a little bit more so they're all in line and there we go Let's switch them all on and we're gonna play a racing game a rally game. It's called uh, WR7. R, uh, sorry, WRC7. Let's just fire it up real quick. Or let me make sure we have the right input. Okay. And that we have audio as well, so you can also hear what's happening in the game. Is it plugged into the right PC? It should be. But I have to select Display Port. There we are. Sound settings. Let me make sure you also hear the audio in game. There we go. Let's fire it up. So, what's really cool if you really have a setup like this. It is quite expensive because you're going to need three monitors for this. And because they're curved, they really go all around you. So that gives you that really immersive experience. And this is compatible with both uh, AMD Infinity and Nvidia Surround Display. So you can, doesn't matter what kind of graphics card you have, you can always get this immersive triple monitor experience if you want to. Let's just drive a race. I'm not very good at this, so don't judge my bad performance. Let me get a little bit out of the way so I don't block the whole screen. There we 
go. So when you're using only one monitor, if you want to watch to the left or right, usually you need to use a separate button. For example, on controllers, quite often they're right here and you move them left or right to watch to the left or right. Now you can just move, actually move your head and see what happens left or right of you. Oh, oops. I'm not very good at this as I told you before. So this is really, really immersive. It's three times 27 inch curve monitors. So if you're doing this, make sure you have a really, really beefy graphics card because it's, it's really hard on your PC. Go. I'm getting better at this. It's good that I'm doing this with the controller because with the keyboard it will be absolutely impossible for me. Okay. Well. That was enough. <laughs> so triple monitor gaming, and this is I showed it with a with a racing game, which is of course very very immersive because you can watch the size as well. But you can also do this in a shooter game, so you can it's easier. You have a bigger field of view, so you can e easily see the the enemies on the sides. Maybe you can see some black elements in the game. They're actually green, but because we're using chroma keying, it might look a little bit different. But you get the point. So now we're just going to move these two screens to the side, because there's more to show you. I already explained to you about the gaming OSD, which is a software feature to adjust your monitor's settings. So usually you have to do that on the back. Okay, let's get this one out, and this one. There we go. And then I'm just gonna swap the audio connector as well. Um. Of course, in between. Tom Raider. Let me see if we already have some contestants. We actually do. So let's draw our first winner. That one, we'll just keep it here. Uh, winners. So we'll randomly pick a winner of all contestants and we will do the same at the end of the stream. So if you didn't uh, enter yet here, the Gleam link, make sure to go there because we're raffling another game code and we'll be giving it as soon as the game is out. So first I'm going to draw our first winner for today. There we go. Our first winner is Michiel Schumann. It, it's, it sounds very Dutch. I'm not sure if he is from the Netherlands, but it sounds very Dutch. Because I'm called Michiel. We also call me Mike, because it's easier in English. But Michiel sounds a lot like Michiel. But congratulations, you won a game code of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We will send it to you as soon as the game is out. And now we'll get right back into the gaming OSD. There we go. So here you can see the gaming OSD. It's just an application you can install on your computer and it pretty much shows you what you can see if you boot up the regular OSD on the back with the joystick. But this is a lot easier because you can just use your mouse to go through all different profiles. You can adjust brightness, contrast levels, sharpness. There's also a black tuner, which is really interesting because black, black tuner gives you the opportunity to make darker areas a bit brighter. So for example, if you're playing a shooter game like PUBG or CSGO, you can make the shadows a bit brighter so it's easier to spot enemies and such. Um, there is also, for the health freaks out, out of us, like before you go to bed, never sit behind a monitor anyway, but if you still do, 
and we're all gamers, so we still do. We have an iSaver function in the monitor, and if you switch that on, as you can see, it's a bit yellowish or orange almost. So that if you're still gaming late, and I'm sure most of you will, then make sure to switch this on. Here we also have functions like anti-motion blur to really get rid of the, the motion blur in games for a more clear image. You can also enable uh, free sync here. Um, then we have screen assistance. In some games you don't have a crosshair, but it's just included in this monitor. So you can just start it up here. You can choose between all different patterns. So for example, if you want the round one, and you can also choose between right or a red or a white one, just whichever you prefer and which is more suitable for the game. Then here on the right, we have refresh rate, and that actually displays, you all know those frame counters, like in the corner of your monitor, you can put a frame counter uh, where you can see your frame rate, but it's not very common that you can see the refresh rate of your monitor as well. So here, if you switch this on, we're actually capturing this device with a capture card, which is limited to 1080p 60, uh, 60 hertz. So if I switch this on, it should be 60. Left top, yeah, 60 hertz. But of course, if you're not capturing your device and you can just set it to 144 hertz, which is a lot smoother. So that was uh, the gaming OSD. Just makes your life a lot easier when adjusting your monitor settings. But as I told you as well, there is more about this monitor and that's the RGB on the bottom of the monitor. It's also on the back, but of course it's hard to, sh to see the back of your monitor if you're in front of it. But it's not just just for entertainment. It's also you can actually use it in the game. So it benefits you in the game. And for that we have a cooperation with SteelSeries and we're using the SteelSeries Engine 3 software. So let me just boot that up. So here you can see my gear. I'm also using a uh, SteelSeries keyboard and mouse here. You can synchronize all of them with your monitor. It's also very interesting. If you go to Engine Apps, you can see all kinds of different apps that you can use uh, with the lighting of your monitor. So we're going to play some CSGO. So I'll just go to configure and uh, select my monitor. There we go. And you can actually see the bar below with all the different LEDs. So you can give them a separate function. For example, this by default, this one is uh, set to health. Now it's green, but we're using chroma keying. So if it's green, it will disappear. So let me just switch that color. We'll just make it blue. So it's blue by default now and it's turning to red once once your health goes down because you get shot. In the middle now we have headshots, so they're purple, and on the right side we have ammo. So if I start shooting, this bar should decrease to the left. So let's just check it out in-game as well. So now you can see it's still the default setting, so it's still just switching colors because that's it's only active when you're really in the game. So if you're in the menu, you will just see the default lighting effects that you set in the settings. But once you go in the game, play CSGO, here we will just have a practice match, match with bots because then maybe I stand a chance. And we'll just go. Dust 2. That's an old map. That was an old, older Counter-Strike versions as well. I think I remember this one from Counter-Strike 1.6 maybe already. So for the old people out here, hmm, let's just play terrorist. It's always more fun to play terrorist. On the left, now it's blue, but the default setting is green. That's my health at the moment. Now I have a bomb, so I don't have any ammo. But if I switch to my gun, now you see the bar right here is yellow, and that's for my ammo. If I start shooting, you see the bar decreasing as I shoot. If I reload, it's all full again. So now the middle bar is still empty because we set that to headshots. So we're just gonna see if we can find an opponent and we'll just go for the headshot. They're bots, so I should be able to get a headshot here. And an enemy. Come here. So that's one headshot. So you can see one LED lighting up and I'm getting shot from the side so my health is all the way down. We can actually continue as a bot, right? Yeah. 
So now because I'm playing as a bot and not as my actual players, it will not display my health. But of course, if you're playing a multiplayer game, you're not playing as a bot, so you will always see your health right there. But the ammo does work. It also flashes if you go down low enough in your ammo. And that's something, yeah, it flashes if you go down in ammo, and you can actually uh, set at what point it will flash. You can also do that for your health or headshots. So for example, now one headshot, one LED switches on. But if you shoot three headshots, for example, you can set it that it flashes at three headshots. You can also do it for 10 headshots or 20. So now we got the health bar full again. Let's see if we can keep it full this time. Oh, that's actually an enemy. Okay, so it decreased a little bit, but I'm still alive. I should have bought another weapon. I'm still running around with a pistol. Who's that next round? I'll get an AK next time. I always hear the AK is the best weapon in Counter-Strike. I have no idea if that's still the case. Maybe it's old information, but... Oh, that's my mate. Everyone's searching for the last enemy, probably. Hiding in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Bots are just at camping long, around. At long, by the way. They have to the right. Ah, there he is. My pistol is not the best for this. <laughs> no. no. Okay, so now let's take our weapon. Now, one click, of course, it dims one LED. But if we buy, for example, rifle, AK. We don't need anything else. So if we start shooting, you really see it decreasing by a number of bullets. Shoot, shoot it almost empty, then, then it starts flashing. Almost, I don't know if almost I... Almost empty, not complete. I don't know if I... Oh yeah, there it goes. So that reminds you, you have to reload. Why isn't he dying? Aim down a bit. Recoil. <laughs> I'll just blame the way I'm standing playing right now. They don't see it. <laughs> no, they don't see it. That's why I informed them. It's okay. a good excuse, right? <laughs> I can show you guys. Yeah, it's it's hard playing it's like this. Awkward. And it's very bad for your back as well. <laughs> don't do this. Don't try this at home. Not MSI recommended. No. De <laughs> definitely not a recommended way to game. So there you go. Show the list of things that you can use to trigger the animation in uh, SteelSeries. Yeah, I will go back into the software and show a bit what you can all do. Because there are, there are a lot of different settings. These were just default settings. But you can just adjust everything towards your own needs. So you have five bars here. And now I have two for health and two for ammo. But you can also divide them up or use the complete bar for health or whatever you like best. So let's get back into the settings. So here you can, for example, if we want to, now we is, this is all health, the blue part. But if we want to adjust this part, just select it. On the left, you have a drop down menu, it shows health, ammo, round kills, headshots, flashbang blindness, money, match kills, armor, helmet, or you can just disable it. So for example, we can put armor next to health. That makes sense, right? So now with the dark blue bar, you can see your health. And with the light blue bar, you can see your armor. Also here, we can adjust now the full bar. These two parts are all ammo. We can just adjust this. And for example, here we put money. And let's make that... Money is usually green, but because we're using chroma key, it doesn't make sense. So we're sticking to red. So now we have health, armor, headshots, money, and ammo. But what you can also do, if you're only interested in your ammo, you can just make it completely just for ammo. So um, we have 
actually more LEDs than ammo right now, I think. But here it will definitely give you a better feeling of how much ammo you have than when you're using a small bar. Switch back to the old, where you have all different effects. This one. No, no yeah, I don't know. Maybe the, the arrow backwards, above where you're sitting now. Maybe then we'll go back to the, yeah, yeah, to the right. That one? No. One that one? Yeah. Yes. That just, yeah, that, uh, it's like Control z it will, again, again. it will reverse what you did. Okay, it doesn't have a redo. So let's see. We have money. We had red. So now let's Start fire up the game again. So you can see how it changes. And the strike. And at the moment, it's still using the the default uh, point where it starts flashing. But as I told you, you can just adjust it as you like. You could, for example, if you shoot one bullet, you can already make it flash to notify you that you're not in full ammo anymore. But that's just up to your liking. A lot of people do tend to reload after firing one Yeah, bullet. like firing one bullet and reload. That's the way to go, right? You always need to have full ammunition. Reload Everyone knows that, Peter. Always reload after the fir first I bullet. I know. That one bullet makes the difference. <laughs> makes all the difference. That one bullet can make a difference. It can. There we go, so now we should have... Yeah, your money bar is really money. going. Yeah. That means, because in this game mode you actually don't... Uh, there is no money in, in bot games? Sure, there is. On the left top you see it. Like Maybe if I earn some money it will do something. Either that or it's just uh, extremely happy with your current money situation. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was in real life as well. Yeah. Die. Get some headshots. Oh, he doesn't want. Oh, that was a headshot, right? Yeah. See, now it changed. Yeah. But I'm not sure what, what you said it to the money, so it might be. I'm not uh, sure either. But I think so you have to earn money to yeah. make it respond to... Well, you can set it. So probably you can say at different levels of money, it will either change color or flash or, or you know, become... Let me just take a look at that. Fully lit or, or partially lit. Here we have money. So there you see flash Oh yeah, above, there you go. Flash above a certain number. Yeah, it flashes above $16,000, but also have has like intervals for a certain amount of money, yeah. you can set a different color. Yeah. So there's detailed control, very yeah. detailed control, down yeah. to the and single LED. Yeah, so you can really define it all the way to your liking. So let's sw switch it to round kills. Oh, I have to select all of them. Select. Round kills, there we go. So now it is, it switches color as you get more kills in the round. Please come back, Counter Strike. Give it a minute. Counter Strike is a bit odd. There you go. I think you have to restart your game after you adjust your settings. Because I don't know what you're seeing, but I'm seeing a rainbow. Oh, he was I thought he was dead, but he was actually just camping. <laughs> that was lame. Isn't that the same thing? <laughs> just play dead and win. <laughs> I can buy... Let's go for the rifle again. I want the AK. I'm sure people in chat are making fun of my... Counter Strike skills. Not yet. Not yet? No. You're letting me down, chat. Chat, where are the memes? Give him some love. Are you gamers? These are my mates. Has n nobody been making fun of my. No, it's a missed opportunity. Yeah. If I would be watching myself right now, I would be memeing.
I think he's camping in, in the corner again somewhere. Playing dead. And it starts flashing. Reload. Full. Where's the camper? Maybe the same corner. Nope. That's my body. I almost chopped my body there. I have absolutely no idea where the guy is. Follow your body. He just died. He just died? To the right. There we go. So that's game sense. Let's go back to desktop. So I'm just gonna move this to the side again because we have to raffle one more winner for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I now remembered the name. Usually it's like the game and something behind it, so Tomb Raider something. But I think now I'm confused because it's Shadow of the. So let me. That almost went right, so let me see if we have enough cable. Let's move to the right. I have more cable on this side. There we go. So, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Let me see if I can adjust the microphone so you can still hear me. That should be a bit better. <laughs> I'm reading chat. Can't say anything because I suck at that game. Good, I'm not the only one. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, good effort. <laughs> Mirror 31 is asking, when will the screen be available on the market? It already is, so you can already buy this. Let's draw our second winner. So we got, oh, we got a lot more entries. Got a lot more questions too, you can answer some of them. Yeah, we'll definitely answer some. Mm -hmm. I'll first draw one more winner. So our next winner, Romana Rajkovic, congratulations. She won a game code for, right here, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and I remembered the name. You'll receive it as soon as the game comes out, so you can activate it on Steam. And play it all day long if you like. I'll answer some more questions in chat. Ah, the tune. So it doesn't support any other games than Dota 2 or CS I'm perhaps? Not, new upcoming games. I think PUBG will be supported soon, I heard. The official answer is uh, yes, there should be more games coming up, but we don't know which ones, and this is... Uh, I think I heard PUBG, but I'm not sure. Steel series thing, unconfirmed, unconfirmed. So it's still well, perhaps. depending... I think, I think they will focus on popular titles, maybe esports titles. So yeah. maybe Fortnite is something I could imagine, but this is something I, I'm not sure, so don't put me down on this, I, I don't know. Alex says, I like 24-inch monitor better. We also have 24-inch. Unfortunately, not with GameSense yet, but we do have 24-inch monitors with RGB, 144Hz, VA panel, so you still get a very good gaming experience with them. Let me see if we have more questions. What monitor should I buy for a second monitor? For a second monitor? Um, Says one personally, with no if you're using two monitors, I would always recommend using two of the same monitors, but at least try to get similarities between monitors. So if you have a curved monitor, try to buy a second curved monitor. If you have a 24 inch, try to buy a second 24 inch. So try to get a, a monitor that is as close as possible to your primary monitor. Because especially if you want to game on both monitors at the same time, that will give you a lot better experience if you get the same image quality and size on both monitors.
I can see Mikhail Schumann is very happy with his coat. Good to see. So, I think those were pretty much all the questions. So now let's close it off. Thank you all for watching. If you have if you want to know more about the monitors, just visit our website and you can find a lot of information about them there, about specifications, but also features. Um, for next week, we're going to discuss something that is still secret, it's still under NDA, so I cannot announce yet what we will do, but I can promise you it will be very interesting. So make sure to tune in next week, same time, same place, and see you then. Goodbye.